Welcome to Life and Music, where we meet, listen to, and learn about music artists from the Los Angeles area and beyond. I'm Teodros Avery. Through my travels as a band leader and also as a sideman, I've learned that people are generally more interested in a band outside of just an interview and a performance. Here on Life & Music, we're gonna delve into other areas of these artists and find out really what inspires their art, what makes them write the songs that they write, what makes them perform the way they do. Of course, time away from music can influence music as well, so we're gonna go into those areas and find out what is it about this artist that makes them cool, complicated, genius. influences tend to be people like John Coltrane, Curtis Mayfield, uh, Run DMC, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, you know, fast, fast moving music, you know, and that tends to be city music. Check out the city, you see the movement of the people, the cars, the lights, you always gotta be aware of what's going on around you. You have to be aware. My music has that aspect to it, but you always have to be checking each other out, checking out the musicians, thinking about what they're playing, thinking about their interaction with you. Just like a city, when you're moving around the city, you always gotta be aware of your surroundings. Same kind of thing, especially when I'm playing real fast jazz. That music right there is all about city life and really relating to it and being able to function in it and be successful at it, if you know what I mean. If you've ever been to a place like New York City where there's a lot going on, and if you're not aware of your surroundings, you could get got, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that sense of awareness is also in my music and just being uh, alert at all times. situation is all about the city environment. There are some situations where you actually have to fall back, and that is usually when you're a side man or a side woman. That means that you're backing up another performer. And I've experienced backing up people such as Lauren Hill, Matchbox 20, uh, Train, Pat Monahan, Most Deaf, uh, People like that. I've been in the studio with people like Amy Winehouse, uh, Josh Stone. And so my point in mentioning those people is that it takes a whole different set of characteristics to be able to adapt to that situation. It's not like this. It's more like quiet, similar to how people are in a library. So you're more in a supportive role and you have to make sure that they feel comfortable and that you are not sticking out as a performer. So 
in the same way that we would be on that stage. I say to you right now. In today's show, I'll be introducing you to my music. Now, what I do is I bridge the worlds between me as a performer and also me as an educator. I'm a doctor of music and I teach here at Cal State University, Dominguez Hills. So I bring those two worlds together as I educate and I also as I share my music with the world ultimately. <laughs> So today we're rehearsing for a gig at the club hotel called Freehand in downtown LA. What I'm gonna do is take you through the rehearsal process. You'll actually get to see how musicians communicate in a rehearsal. As you know, every band plays the same song differently. So I'm gonna focus on making sure that they play the arrangement according to how I'm hearing it and also according to how they play because what we want to do is find the middle ground between how I play or how we all play and how I arrange music. Play the drum beat. Now as you see Sam is a real professional but what I can do is I can give him the basic understanding of where I'm coming from and then he can take it to where keyboard players will take it of course in a more advanced technically uh, developed area so now I just have to bass player, he's an accomplished bass player, he tours all over the world with different people, but sometimes it takes a band leader to really break it down and really get specific with what you're looking for, because ultimately, if you wrote the composition, you're hearing it a certain way. Same with the drums. But what'll happen is all of them will put it all together and then they'll take it to level 10 as individual musicians. As a band leader, it's also important to choose musicians who are malleable, who understand that you have your own concept and musicians have to be open to hearing your suggestions if you're the band leader. Some musicians are not into it and it makes it a little harder to collaborate. just like that. Here we are at Freehand LA in downtown LA, one of the premier clubs to showcase bands. 
and feature some of the hottest entertainment in Los Angeles. It's important to have a space where you can really communicate as a band and really get your concept out. You have to play on a regular basis to really work it out rather than just, you know, showing up at a gig one time and expecting to hit a bullseye. You gotta, sometimes you have to work things out. And that means making mistakes, trying again, talking with your band, having a rehearsal, figuring out what works and then coming back again and then after a year you have such a clear band concept. What I like to do is merge the traditional sounds of instruments with newer sounds, and that can be by using pedals, using delays, harmonizers, things like that to change the sound of a traditional instrument like the saxophone. And it gives it more of a new edge. Now what I did here is I remixed the song that I wrote, I Don't Care. When we played it in the studio, it was more of a traditional jazz song, but here I remixed it with these musicians, because these are different types of musicians. So I wanted to bring out their strengths. Their strengths happen to be playing hip hop, playing funk, real groove music. So I wanted to remix the song to fit those musicians. When you're playing to an audience, you get to really tie into the people who are right in front of you. Sometimes they key in on different aspects of the music that you may not be thinking about. And when they do, when they do focus on those areas, you want to really cultivate that connection. Other times you might want to present something that they maybe never have heard. So you want to give them something that you want them to walk away with, some kind of musical idea or a vibe or a groove. So you can choose whether you want to connect with them, whether you want them to lead you a little bit, or whether you want to lead them and teach them about your music. Either way, having an audience is way, way better than being in a room with no audience because you, you get to feed off of that energy and you need that energy in order to create really good art.
No, what I did here was I remixed the song that I wrote, Funky Slice. I added an introduction and we layered different instruments with the loop machine. So I beatboxed up front and then I layered saxophone. And this is a way of bridging technology with more traditional music art forms. Take a listen. Now what we've done is bridge the technology with the acoustic instruments to create a more modern sound in an acoustic environment. Notice in this band we have older guys as well as some younger guys. It's important to mix up the ages because what you do is you educate each other in the process. Young guys can learn from older guys, and older guys can learn from younger ones. Ultimately, that's how you pass the music on to future generations.
Now in future episodes of Life in Music, what we want to do is interview artists and bands from different areas of music. 
And in doing so, we'll find that some of the artists will be inspired by different aspects of life, especially things that are different from what inspires me or what affects me and my music. So we might find ourselves at the beach, we might find ourselves shooting pool, uh, anywhere, you know, anywhere in life that they feel that they are inspired by can be the place where we will be to talk with them. And, uh, you know, just always know that artists are affected in different ways. You know, different artists seek different stimuli to create what they create. And uh, we really want to tap into that and really learn about what the artists are affected by in their lives as they create music as an artist and also as a band. So just be ready to go on the journey with me. Lord, will on the drums. Lord, will on the drums. 